What's going on guys? So today it is a beautiful day outside. What better way than to drive the kooky out today? Literally went through everything and the only thing left I could think of is that the cam angle sensor again is faulty. So we're gonna take it for a test drive today. Just uh, finished hooking everything up on here. Um, so yeah, this right here, I think may be the culprit. Uh, I was reading online, they said they're known to go bad. So hoping that may be the issue because I literally went through everything, the wiring, all that good stuff. But right now, you gotta go ahead, move all these cars around. Every time I turn this on, I always say I wanna get another Z. Damn, still running rich as hell. Look at all that smoke. Whew. Hella fuel. All right, let's go ahead. Turn this bad boy on. I'm just trying to diagnose all these problems because I'm trying to drift like two more times before the end of the year. And definitely want to take this out. I don't think the Skyline will be ready for uh, a drift event this year. Right up. But right away, you could just hear that misfire. It's crazy. Well, one of the good things I noticed was that literally from changing the ball joints and the control arms and uh, tightening up like uh, the tie rods, changing that out as well. Like the steering on this is so tight. Like, dude, this is how the car should feel. I wish it felt like this while I was drifting and it was just sloppy, it was a loosey goosey. But it also caught itself like when I felt like I was doing a sharp turn, doing like a whole 90 degree, well not 90, but doing a whole sharp turn, it almost fell on its face, but it actually caught itself. So that's a plus right there as well. So we're just gonna go, take it slow, do a couple of runs. I feel like I got allergies, like my nose is so runny. But let's go and see uh, how the car is. Right now, it'd fall on its face. Ah, oh, might have caught itself. Oh, so far, yeah. 12, 9, 13s. Not too, too bad. Forgive me also trying to record. I should have brought my GoPro and put it on the middle, but we're stuck with the camera for now. Try to get some uh, good clips. It's not driving too, too bad. I should have put like the little like cover inside because a lot of like uh, air and dust is coming out. Unless it's just because like the 240 is dusty, but I don't know if you guys can see there's a little shake It's like my exhaust My exhaust is hitting I think the dip and it's just shaking literally everything so I gotta fix that But at least the car is like not falling on its face, I guess But it's not too too bad So doing a u-turn it definitely uh, definitely feels way better but you can still hear like a little multiple misfire. Do a little pull down the street right here. Pulling 
pretty good. Can't complain so far. Look at this shape. Uh, la, 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 so yeah, like I said, around like 55, 60. Oh, actually, it could be my tires too. My uh, front left one is uh, like keeps keeps leaking. My right front one is like rubbing like crazy because it buckled my fender from the ball joint. So who knows? One of those. We gotta swap tires on that. Guys, that Kendrick Lou right there. Yo, I know you from Instagram. <laughs> so leaving the gas station, uh, right when I went to go, I put like 10 bucks of fuel in it. And right when I went to go turn it on, it literally wanted to die. Turned it on, wanted to die, which was weird. It just literally fell on its face. Um, I'm not sure what that could be. Cause I changed the coolant temp sensor as well. But I went up and down and so far so good. So I'm not sure what else it could be. It still sounds like a vacuum leak, but I did a boost leak test literally like five times and still nothing. They're like small little leaks coming from the manifold, uh, one of the nipples on the manifold, but it's blocked off, so that can't be it. But honestly, I'm lost for words right now. If you guys have any idea, uh, some people were saying it could be like a stuck open uh, leaky injector, but I'm honestly lost right now. But I mean, under under full throttle and everything, the car is running phenomenal, which is weird. I'm not sure if it's because it's map sensor, so it's trying to pick up the slack uh, and like sending more fuel or what, but damn, I don't know. All right guys, we got some goodies here. Got that long, that big boy black long, hell yeah. Got a custom drive shaft, shout out to Jesse. Gonna put this on right now, throw some Loctite on the four bolts here, and we should be good. Whoa! Squirted everywhere, fuck. All right, just getting these. Feed this right in through here. I say it doesn't fit. Bam. Lock tight on. Hold drive shafts in. It's looking good there. And just gotta tighten it. Next thing we're doing is gonna be modifying this throttle body bracket. But man, I don't know about you guys. I'm lactose intolerant, but I love like burritos and quesadillas and all that and I had Taco Bell and that's where I messed up. This was me literally that. This right here where it says no, that was me. All day. All day. But Skyline's all done for now. Uh just gonna move the skyline over there because I have good old emissions in Connecticut for the 240. So I gotta put it back um, stock exhaust and everything. We have this magical exhaust that literally passed about like six different cars. All RB, SRs, 1J, all passed it. I don't know how, cause there's so many rat holes in it, but that passes me every single time. So I gotta put that on and go for emissions. I'm not sure if I said this before, but, so what I had to do for the throttle uh, cable, I actually had to use the S13 one because the S13 one is, uh, it needs about four four inches longer than the RB. Reason being is the RB has the pedal, the throttle cable bracket with the pedal on the same side as where the throttle cable bracket would go. I'll show you guys real quick. I don't even know what I'm talking about. We turn this fan off. So usually throttle cable would come right here and would run literally right here on the RB. So, had to get an S13 one. Reason being is that the throttle cable bracket is on the opposite side on an S13, S14 KA. So, that's why we were able to run this. So as you can see, there's a lot of, there's a lot more room. So gonna make the little bracket here so I can use the OEM side and literally have it just like that. Doing the measuring on this, so, I wanna use this, but I literally have too much slack when I put the throttle cable on it. So what I wanna do is cut this right here and literally just move this whole bracket right in between here. That should give me the enough uh, enough space. 
and I'll be able to use the same holes for the OEM side. Who's in the mood for some popcorn? All right guys, don't judge me. This is literally my first time ever welding and I literally just documented it right away. So those are popcorn as <laughs> uh, beads right there. There's some popcorn as beads right there, but it'll do the trick. I'm just gonna sand it down a little bit and because not a lot of tension is going right there with the throttle cable. So I'm gonna put that on, measure it up. Hopefully everything's good. Gonna let it cool down a little bit. And uh, we'll go ahead, clean it, paint it, make it look a little bit better. If you guys need any welding done, don't hit me up because I don't know how to weld. <laughs> but I think I'm actually gonna hold off on putting the exhaust just because uh, I think we can try to find out what's actually wrong with the car. I don't want to take it to emissions, have it fail, whatever. I mean, it's still, it's still good till next year, till June. So I think I'm gonna end it off here, guys. Like always, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you guys have any pointers uh, for welding, that I'm gonna try to do something new with that. Adrian's coming soon, finish his car, literally just needs a tune, so we'll do a video on that. And Jimmy should be coming uh, later this week. So we could go ahead, wire this bad boy up, and hopefully have a startup. Stay tuned, guys.